Hey, hey, welcome back. Eric Arnold here in the sports barn. Oh, it's, I'm losing track of the dates. The 26th. Uh, is it Wednesday? I think it's Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday the 26th here in your sports barn. Uh, so what do we got going on? We got in the politics barn episode coming up. Topics. Oz Fetterman debate. That was Tuesday night, just a few hours ago. We'll talk about that. I watched the whole thing. Uh, and the Ukrainian war update. Uh, give you a, an idea where I think that's at. Uh, so that's over on Rumble. Check that out. Link is in the comments of this video. Uh, if you're doing that, always make sure you look up Politics Barn. That's our handle. If you look under Eric Arnold, you may or may not find it. Politics barn, all one word. Look for that. Uh, this will be a disjointed quick episode of the sports barn. Uh, Phillies are in the World Series, obviously, but at the top, I gotta say, uh, my father passed away Sunday morning. So we've been kind of uh, twisted around about that. Uh, plus, I got sick. <laughs> First time I've been sick since uh, December of uh, 19. Uh, but I'm mostly over it. Uh, but at any rate, um, I guess this will be mostly kind of a practice eulogy. I've already semi-committed myself to speak at the funeral. Um, and, and the pressure's on. As soon as I said I, th I might say something at the funeral, my mother says, well, something nice. <sighs> yeah, okay. I'll, all right. Leave out the story about how my father and I banged a pair of hookers back in uh, 1987. Leave that out. You know, okay, something nice. Okay. Um, I don't know. You know, uh, I, I think I may just keep it short. How to like limit the, my opportunities to cry and or say something inappropriate. <laughs> so I think there might be dual. Uh, advantages to keeping it short um, and, and it's my experience usually when public speakers keep their stuff short it's it's much better it's much better uh, the Gettysburg address was two minutes two minutes you know so and and they hold that up as uh, one of the greatest speeches in the history of speeches um, well you know he, he, he I can't think of a, uh, having a better father you know, I, I thought, well, what I say, he's the greatest man I ever knew. And I, that's a pretty high bar then, because I expect on outliving everybody. Uh, and then when I go to eulogize all you people out there, that, that, do I now, that, that kind of then cuts you all off at the pass. That nobody can be better then, because I've already declared him the best man ever. So I don't know if I'm going to go there. So I'm going to use a pretty great. I, I'm not uh, gonna lie. Some of these are pretty great, so I, I, maybe I want to hold that title open and just leave it like that. But I couldn't hope for a better father. I mean, he was always there. He, he never abandoned us. He always provided. Uh, he said one thing. He never said that much. So he always, whenever he did say something, he always kind of like, oh, made a note. You know, made a mental note. You know, one time we were in a grocery store. I think we were on vacation. Uh, we were camping. He hated to camp, uh, but we didn't have any money. So I remember that, that conversation pretty clearly around 1981. We had a family meeting and the family never had meetings. So it's like, uh oh, this is serious. And it was along the lines of, well, we don't have any money. Uh, if you want to go on vacation, we're going to have to cut back and we're going camping. Okay. You know, I'm a kid. What do I care? That sounded okay to me. I didn't think I was that horrible. Uh, now he did because he hated camping. Uh, but <laughs> so we're standing in line at the grocery store getting provisions to go back to the campsite. And I said, Dad, that, that other line's moving faster. He said, story of my life. <laughs> so I don't know if that's probably true. Who knows? Uh, he was a terrible investor. I knew that. Uh, one time I asked him for investing advice about some mid nineties. I had $10,000 I had saved up and I was going to put it in the stock market. 
And uh, I said, should I put it on? I'm looking at this like little stupid, no one's ever heard of NASDAQ company that makes transformers. I think it was like trans or T-R-N-S or, or I'm thinking about just putting in AOL. And that was before AOL exploded. He said, well, I'd, I'd, I'd buy that transformer company. It's like, okay. So, you know, that, that didn't make any money on that gig. Uh, but uh, always, always was looking for the bigger, better deal. Um, my mother took over the checkbook, I think, in around 2002, for, all for the best. Uh, at any rate, yeah, but he was, uh, you know, n n never mean. He was never mean. So I always had that going for me. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, he, he didn't just drop dead for you turned it in for the first time or say, oh my God, how traumatic. He's 92. <laughs> he was 92. I mean, you know, he outlived just about all, uh, I think just about every last friend of mine, all their fathers are dead. So he outlived them all. So I can't really be sad, you know, uh, I don't want to be that guy. Uh, I'm saying he's dead. Uh, he started to go about a year ago. You know, he started losing his mobility. And uh, he just, uh, you know, just kind of, uh, once he started to lose his mobility, that was what he liked to do was garden and do stuff in the yard. And once he couldn't do that anymore, you know, then his mind started to go. And then... And then his body really started to go. He, he had been fending off, he had cancer, and he'd been fending that off for, oh, probably seven, eight years. But it took hold there in the last year, and I think that's probably what will end up on the death certificate. Uh, so here in this last, you know, two weeks, he's been dead basically for all intents and purposes for three weeks and just finally gave up the ghost here Sunday. So anyway, uh, I didn't even write it on the board. I mean, I'm kind of out of sorts right now. So you're getting a quick and dirty eulogy version. Uh, here, we'll put it up here. Herbert. M. Arnold. 19. 29 to 2022 there you go so he's 92 so i'll miss him i think for the most part i have absorbed all his wisdom you know at this juncture um he, he now resides with me mostly you know or totally in my mind sort of like superman when he wanted to call up the knowledge of Jarrell, he would just pull out an ice crystal. You know, if I want to think about what would Herb Arnold say about a certain situation, I could just pull up the Herb Arnold ice crystal. And then, and, and I don't know what, if he throws it, it turns into another ice palace or something, if I remember right. So I, I guess he reads it somehow. Anyway, I'll know what he, I know pretty much what he would say about most situations. So I think I'm prepared uh, to go through the last 30 years of my life. At any rate, um, uh, so there's that. How, how do you end the eulogy? Do you just say, God bless his uh, dead soul or something like that? I guess I got to work on that before Saturday. Saturday, that's when the funeral is, if anybody's in the Gibraltar area. But, uh, uh, all right. Phillies, happy or turn. Uh, let's talk about something happy here. Uh, the Phillies are in the World Series. Uh, 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 who uh, who would have thought that? Um, and I've been thinking about this because early in the season I buried this team. I hated this team. I, I just uh, said this is a bad team. This is a team going nowhere. And here they are in the World Series. So what changed? It certainly wasn't that I was wrong, because that we're just not going to go there. I don't think that's the case. Uh, they got rid of Girardi. We were calling for that. You got to get rid of this guy. He's just dead weight. He's not doing anything. He's, whatever this dude's doing ain't working. And they did it, uh, which is usually, 
it's one of Newton's laws. A body at rest tends to stay at rest. So usually if you got a bad manager, you just keep him, you know, and, and you don't make a change, and you just keep losing. Well, the Phillies management, Dom, uh, Dave Dombrowski, he's the guy calling the shots now. He wasn't just going to sit there and throw the season away. So he dumped Girardi, and it was like flipping a switch. You put this guy Rob Thompson in, and he has been hot all year. Every button he pushes works, and if the button he pushed doesn't work, he immediately flips another switch, and then it works. It's amazing. Everything he does is turning to gold right now. So he's basically broken every last record there is as far as interim managers go. You know, no interim manager's done what this guy's doing. Uh, uh, so, and, and now he's, I guess, officially does have a two-year contract. And we don't love him that much. We just gave him two years. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. So, um, we got some better guys in that could catch the ball. You know, we, we made a trade late in the year for Brandon Marsh to play center field. That shored up that position. We got rid of a double Herrera. We got rid of Didi Gregorius. That was another guy that couldn't catch at the end of his career. And, and now we're playing uh, Bryson Stott pretty regularly. He's young. He catches better than he hits. Uh, so right there, we upgraded our defense. Uh, we got a guy for nothing, basically, named Amando Sosa. Sosa, don't you ever F me, Tony. Don't you ever F me. That's from Scarface, where the bad guy is Sosa. So Sosa, he this is a defensive wizard, this guy. So he's been a big pickup. And uh, so, yeah, they've definitely done some work shoring up their defense. Uh, their bats are starting to wake up. Bryce Harper is just carrying the mail. I mean, I, I've always hated this guy. And I'm really conflicted now, <laughs> i got to admit it, because... He's just been the most ridiculously clutch guy here over the last three weeks. It's amazing. I mean, when him hitting that home run in game five with them down a run in the eighth inning, that's pretty, you know, you're talking Reggie Jackson type stuff, maybe more, maybe almost Bobby Thompson type stuff uh, because he doesn't hit that home run. The Phillies are probably out in San Diego right now in a death match trying to make the World Series. So... Uh, the, the starting pitching's been good. They made a good move in bringing in Syndergaard. Uh, that was part of the Marsh deal. And they moved a guy that was never going to pan out, a prospect, the number one pick in the whole damn draft. You've never heard of him because he stinks. His name's Mickey Moniak. He'll never turn into anything. They moved him and got whatever they could for him. And whatever they could for him is helping us into the World Series. So Syndergaard's been helpful. A lot of things have changed on this team. Um, Alec Bohm is a better defender. He was abysmal early in the year. Now he's just bad. Uh, so a lot of things have uh, come into play here for the Phillies. And, and they're just hot. They're just gelling. Uh, so ah, that's my pick for the series. I, I don't see any other way around that. The Phillies are hot. I know the Astros are by far the best team the Phillies will face all year. Uh, but the one hidden factor here, where I, that's where I feel comfortable saying, oh, that's the Phillies. Dusty Baker manages the Astros. Dusty Baker's a jinx. He's been in, I don't know how many playoff series, more than 10. He's had, I don't know how many cracks at the world championship. And he just can't get there. He can't get there. He can't get there. He, it, it, I don't know he's a bad manager, but it, he's jinxed. It just is. I mean, the closest the guy got was I think he had a 2 I know a lot of people didn't watch baseball in 2 because of steroids, and we were all turned off on that game at that point. But I think he had a three- or four-run lead Maybe more, could have been more, in the eighth inning, and he couldn't take it home. In other words, all he needed to do is close out that game with a six, five or six-run lead in the eighth inning, and he wins the world championship, and he couldn't do it. 
I don't know he could over that, and he hasn't. So <laughs> it, it, it matters. Who the manager is matters. You know, uh, Phil, or whoever the manager of the uh, Padres was, he blew that series there against the Phillies. Game five, he's got the uh, tying run on first, nobody out, Bryce Harper at the plate. He's the go-ahead run. There's no, uh, one out. And he's got killer uh, uh, Josh Hader. I think that's his name. I, the first names are starting to fade on me. Josh Hader's out in the pen. Lefty on lefty. He's going to cancel Harper out. He'll keep him in the park almost certainly. And he didn't bring him in. So he left, you know, his right-handed reliever, who's not nearly as good as Hader, out there to face Bryce Harper, and Harper took him out, and, they're go and now we're going to the World Series, and they're going home. That's a bad manager. That's a bad managing decision by uh, whoever the heck that guy was. Phil Nevin, uh, I don't even remember. Bob Melvin, that's it. Bob Melvin. It was a bad decision on his part. So that's where I think Dusty Baker could come into play and just make one or two key stupid decisions that'll put the Phillies in the World Series on Broad Street having a parade. So, and that's where we're going with that. So, Herb Arnold is dead. The Phillies are going to win the World Series. There you have that. Hey, hit the like button and all that good stuff. Make sure you check out the Politics Barn episode right now coming up, which I'm going to shoot. I guess I'll have to do that eulogy all over again. Maybe it'll be shorter this time. I don't know. Maybe I'll tell different Herb stories in the uh, second eulogy. Well, I'm only going to get to do one at the church. All right. Well, I don't know. I'm wasting your time here now. So, signing off. <laughs>